Welcome back to the Horror Academic, and I'm going to keep this one brief because, um, you know that adage that your mom taught you when you are a kid? If you don't have nice things to say, then don't say things. So yeah, this is going to be a quick one. Um, watched Blackenstein, trying to wrap up my research, um, for my, uh, my project this semester, and, I mean, going in, I had heard this was not a great movie by any means. Um, there was a little bit of speculation in books and documentaries about black horror that it approaches topics of, of um, white doctors and scientists doing experimentation on blacks in, in the past. And, uh, okay, um, there's talk of racism. Yeah, I saw that. And um, some speculation about um, it being kind of um, allegory for blacks in Vietnam. Okay. All those things to get in the first like 20 minutes and the rest of the movie is slow and plodding. Uh, it moves about as fast as you expect the Frankenstein monster to walk. Um, first pet peeve on this one is this is another one of the many examples where they forget that Frankenstein is the name of the scientist, not the monster. Um, he, uh, uh, so, I mean, if brief synopsis, uh, a woman go, who is a, um, recent PhD, uh, goes to a doctor that she had studied under, uh, asking for help. Her fiance was serving in Vietnam and, um, there was an incident with a landmine and he lost his arms and legs. And she was asking, uh, cause the veterans hospital was bas basically just keeping him, um, comfortable but she was saying that you're the only doctor who can help put him back to normal and, and help him get his limbs back. Um, all of this is a fine premise. Uh, I don't, it could have made like a good half hour episode of a TV show, but yeah, I, I there were two cuts. This is the Severn uh, edition. Um, I guess it's Vinegar Syndrome Brands of Severin, uh, or, or I don't know if they're two separate companies. I, I was a little confused by that. I thought they were two separate companies, but anyway, so they have two presentations available, the theatrical cut and the, um, VHS version. And the VHS version was like, like, I think like 10 minutes longer. So I was like, all right, well, watch this one. It seems like it's a more full story, but it's just longer takes. And they say that in a little, um, slate before the, the show. So I get that. Um, all in all, it's amateurish. That's all there is to it. It's, this is somewhere in between 50s B-movies and 60s science fiction television. Um, or maybe 70s sci-fi TV at the best. Like, it has hints of wanting to be a little bit like, um, uh, like, 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 uh, Six Billion Dollar Man or, you know, something like that. Like, um... Uh, I, I mean, the sets reminded us of, uh, like, like early Batman episodes where it's like, there is no set. It's just a blank room that they threw a bunch of props in. And it does have that kind of 50s, 60s, really low budget feel of let's just throw a bunch of things with buzzing and lights and, you know, it, it'll look like a scientist lab. The exterior shot is kind of like, it's almost like the, the exterior uh, that you see a bit in Rocky Horror, where it's just like a tower of a building with some uh, statuary and some fake lightning and, and, and storm clouds and some uh, color work on the windows. But they go to that shot a lot. Um, the acting is like uh, local theater style. Um, people who've never acted before is pretty much what I get out of this. Um, the, he becomes Frankenstein because there's a, an intentional mix-up. Like, they're doing like DNA type testing on him to try and strengthen his body so it'll take a, what we would call now skin grafting, um, or I think they call it morphing of the, the limbs to the body, to the torso. Uh, and the assistant to the doctor is in love with the fiance, and she, of course, says, but I'm here for my future husband, so he gets mad, so he swaps the DNA samples with another patient who is much less 
um, coherent of a person, and it starts to downgrade him to become more um, Neanderthalish because he gets like this brow thing that you see in Frankenstein. <sighs> They're trying really hard in that idea, but really, aside from the first kill where there's a, a in this part I've read a lot about, there's, there's this one orderly at the hospital, the VA hospital, who's very racist and makes awful remarks at him. So he's the first person he goes back and kills once he becomes Frankensteinish. Um, all the others are so random, they don't mean anything. Um, there's like long extended scenes. I had this issue in Blackula too, where there's like, we went to a nightclub and we shot like the performers for the evening and left their entire acts in kind of problem where it's like, it's not just a singer in this one. It's also like a comedian. I guess he's the host of the night, but those sequences are rather long and unnecessary. Um, the kills, like I said, are just so random. There's no meaning to them. Um, like if he had stuck to just killing racist people, maybe I would have given a little bit more credence, but that goes away pretty quick. Um, yeah, it's just not really worth your time. I just watched it because, A, we had it. Um, and I'm pretty sure my husband bought it because he likes Blackula and figured, oh, well, Blackula was good. Maybe this will be good, too. And it wasn't. And that's just how it is. Um, yeah, you know that scene in Ed Wood, the movie, where he goes, and I think they're making Bride of the Monster, and he talks to the prop guy, and he's like, well, where's the thing that with the that makes the noise that with the electricity and where's all that it's like oh you want one of those we can get one of those sure it's like an entire movie of that where it's like oh you want one? yeah i guess we can get one of those you know it's it, there's real no need for most of what happens and like i said if it had been like a half hour episode of some sci-fi tv show it probably would have been more successful than this so that's what it is uh not a great note on ending my week or my um ex you know my my own research um while she wanted to be a positive black character, she was stuck in a movie where she wasn't going to get anywhere anyway, so I don't hold it against the actress. Um, yeah, if you can skip it, skip it. If you like things that are so cheeseball that um, they're endearing, sure. But it's so long and boring for 78 minutes or whatever. 87 minute version I think I watched. Yeah. Watch like the first half hour, and then you're good. Alright guys, I'll see you next week with some more reviews on the Horror Academic.